So let's set up the court buttons, the court name buttons in this video. We will, right now we have just fake dummy buttons here that I just added manually. Uh, we want to actually add the real court names that we get from Tonal.js. So let's go to Tonal.js. Google this and here we go. Let's have a look at this. I know for a fact that uh, in here we have a package called court dictionary. And this court dictionary lets you get the names of the courts. Uh, so we need to install this first because we want the names of each individual court and put them in um, in each button here. So we don't have to do that manually. We could do it manually, um, but we're lazy. So let's do it with uh, tonal JS. I'm going to open up a new terminal here and I'm going to install this, this package and npm install tonal js slash court dictionary. Let's see if that works. I'm going to hit enter and something's happening. So that's, that's a good sign. That's good. Updated one package and audited 30 packages. Let's check if it's added actually. And it has been added right here. I can see that in my package JSON file. I'm going to close that down again. So in our JavaScript file, um, I will import the court dictionary. And it the court dictionary exports a package or an, uh, an entries function. And that's all the entries, court entries in the dictionary. And that will be exported from, again, tonal JS slash court dictionary. I think. So if we go to tonal and look at the package called court dictionary, we can see that we can get uh, the names and the aliases and all of that stuff about the different courts here. Um, what we're looking for, we want to get all the court names. Um, and we are exporting this function up here called entries. And that will give us that will output all the court names if we do something about it. But that's, let's have a look at what's actually happening here. Because I think this one, this is the way to get all of the court names. And that is definitely possible. So let's try that first. But I think it's a little bit weird, though. But we'll, uh, we'll see in a second. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to put it in here. I'm just going to make a variable here. Let's call it all chord names. And then this right here. And then let's console log all chord names. Let's see what happens. I'm going to save. I'm going to go back here. And I get a lot of court names, but I only get 34. And I do know that they are, are more than 34 courts. So that's kind of strange. Um, and also, I think it's this looks kind of complicated. I'm not sure I even know what's going on here. Why you want to filter it and then map that. And, and uh, but let's, let's try and figure out what's going on. So first of all, um, I'm just going to delete this part. And then we will see what is all court names. I'm save, and then you can see we get, I think we get an array with a lot of objects inside of it. Uh, and let me make this bigger. And I mean this one here. Yeah. So you got an object for every single court. And as you can see here, we have like 108, 109 different courts. And before we only got 34. So that's kind of strange. But you can also see that some of them are uh, they don't have a name, and I don't know why, uh, if they just forgot to put a name in it, or if it's not yet updated, but um, we want all of them. And you can see that every single object has a property called aliases here. And uh, some have many, some only have one. This one only has one, but let's find another one, like this one. It has two, so that's an array. So we want to get the first first value of this array aliases array because that's usually what you would call this uh, this court 
and if you don't have if the if the name property is empty we can't really use that so we're going to need to to use this one here instead so but yeah we need to do something about this array that we're getting and let's find out if it's actually an array uh if i write if i type type off here it should uh oops type off oh my god i'm so bad at this okay i will get object but that's because an array is also an object um in javascript so i can't really m be sure that it's an array so i can type in array is array and then i can pass in all court names and if i get true i know that that is a true array so that is true so we know that is an array and we can work with it so we could use an array uh, method on it so let's try and do that let's um i just want to remove this again because i just want to see this content one more time and i get my array of objects actually i want to call this chord entries because it's not yet the name it's just all the chord entries that we have right here um, let's take that let's run a map on it and then let's take each and every entry use an arrow function and we will um, of course we need to put it in a variable so let's call that uh, entry and then we will return entry and name let's see what happens then uh, we will I will console log this instead so as you can see we get this time we actually get a very long uh, array of names but if we take a look at it, you can see that many of the strings are empty, and that's not what we want. We want um, we want the aliases, not the name. So instead of name, we should, if I could spell, and then take the first entry, the first item in in that array. That will give us uh, an array of all the different chord names that we're going to need. So this is what we're going to be using. Uh, but this was just an example. Let's up here. We want to let me set up octaves, create element. Just before create element, let's um, let's make one called setup buttons. And it's basically the same as uh, as the other ones we we did in the previous video, but this time we will need to make a constant chord entry. So I'm just gonna copy this, and I'm gonna put it up here. So we have that already, and then I'm gonna delete it from down here. We don't need that anymore. Also, this one it's gonna give us an error. I'm gonna save it now nothing's gonna happen yet um then actually we should probably rename this to chord names that's a bit more descriptive and we will then we will take chord names and we will run a for each on that and we will have the chord and let's just call it chord name another arrow function here and what do we want to do here we want to do exactly the same thing as we did before so I'm gonna go let uh, chord name on chord button chord button let's call it that um, we want to create a new element just like we did before so this create element and we want to create a button so we pass that in as the first argument and 
we want to uh, what what should the the text on the button be, and that will be the court name here. So that makes sense, just like this. And after that, we want to append it to to something that we still have not grabbed yet. I don't think. So let me go back here, and we have this div class button. So so let's go ahead and grab that up here. Let's just call it buttons. And that will be document query selector and buttons. Oops, that was wrong. I need to look like this. Isn't that right? I think so. Let's grab this one and right here, let's buttons append child and we want to append court button for every single name we have in that array that we just created from the entries. Let's see what's happening now. Nothing is happening right now because we still have to, let me just do this, we still have to initialize it here. So this setup buttons and we have an error let me figure out what that is okay that makes sense that's because i just copied it from before we don't uh, we don't have this this court entries has not been defined so instead of just doing that we can just take the entries and do this so the entries is what we what we uh, import up here. So let me save that and let's see what's going on here. It looks like something's happening. Yes, hooray! A lot of buttons added here. So these first four ones are just something I added manually. So let me go ahead and delete those, save it, and they should be gone with the win. So now we have a button for each and for every single chord that we can get from uh, from this court dictionary, which is great. So in the next video, we are going to be actually hooking this up so we can find out what the different note names of the different chords are and what intervals that chord is made up of. So join me in the next video for that. See ya.